Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You know, when I was doing the video on 20th century violin concertos, the ideal list, I recommended Gil Shaham's recording of the Barber and Korngold concertos because it's absolutely stunning and fabulous. And along the way to doing that, I hauled out, just for curiosity, the Gil Shaham Deutsche Grammophon Complete Recordings box and just started listening to it again, you know, and it's so good. I mean, it's 22 CDs. There really isn't a bad recording in it. He's a marvelous, marvelous violinist. And I went back and looked at what he'd done for the label, and I was just so impressed. So I thought we would go through the Gil Shaham Complete DG Recordings box. But there was something that just fascinated me, and that's the blurb on the back. You know, they have to write a blurb on the back. So let's look at the blurb on the back, shall we? I mean, it's just it just says so much about the dementedness of the classical music industry now. It says, <clears throat> Gil Shaham's exceptional combination of technical brilliance and charismatic warmth has made him one of the most admired classical artists of our time by critics and audiences alike. Very true. The award-winning American violinist Complete Deutsche Grammophon discography, collected here, displays his remarkable versatility in best-selling recordings, absolutely, of favorite chamber works as well as the great concerto repertoire with such eminent partners as Andre Previn, Pierre Boulez, and Claudio Abbado. And they left out Giuseppe Sinopoli, who he does most of the stuff with in here concerto-wise. But, but seriously, seriously, all of that's true. I mean, let's just say all of it's true. They are award-winning, bestsellers completely. The only thing he isn't is a Deutsche Grammophon violinist anymore. And I couldn't help but think about it. You know, if you're going to write a blurb like this to sell the product and you really believe in it, then why the hell doesn't Deutsche Grammophon still record Gil Shaham? I mean, it's not as if he's dead. He's doing fine, as far as I know. He has his own label, Canary Classics, which is quite, quite good, too. I mean, it's got a lot of other performances um, of his on it, and I'm going to be talking about some of those as well, actually. But, you know, the point is, the point is that if he's so terrific... Why is he the subject of a retrospective as if he's dead? I mean, it, it, it's, it, you know what I mean, right? Do I, I, don't need to, I don't need to go into it anymore. I mean, the whole thing is just silly. It really is silly. I mean, here they go and make 22 CDs of this guy who is absolutely terrific. They are universally acclaimed, according to them. They're bestsellers, according to them. But they don't see fit to continue to promote his work or to make any new recordings with him. Go figure. So with that said, let us look at the contents of this very reasonably priced 22 CD set and see what we can find. Let's see here. First, you get a booklet. Yeah, you always get a booklet. Then we haul out the CDs. Actually, it might be easier. Let's see if they're all, oh yeah, we could just go through the booklet. That's even easier than pulling out each each little disky, disc by disc here and going through all, all you know, each one of them. And I may not drop them this time. <laughs> Make a mess all over the place. But this is a wonderful box. It really is. I mean, it's terrific stuff. I mean, Shaham was always a violinist of not just technical brilliance and charismatic warmth, but he also had taste and class. And you'll see he puts these collections together very, very well, because every violinist has to do collections of, you know, favorite encores and things like that. But he does them better than most. He really does. So anyway, let's, the first disc was the Barber Korngold, which is, as I've said, magnificent with Andre Previn and the London Symphony Orchestra. It's just a fantastic disc. It really is. And it, it, at the very least, you should have it singly if you don't um, have it, you know, in the box, if you don't want to get the whole box. And it also contains Korngold's Much Ado About Nothing Suite, which in German is like Viel Larm, you know, Uber Nichts or something like that, you know. Okay, then we get the Bartok Second Concerto for Orchestra with the two Rhapsodies, which are not as you know easy to come by as you would think. Usually you get the second violin concerto with the 
not very interesting first violin concerto. I would much rather have the orchestral versions of the two Rhapsodies. And this is the Chicago Symphony and Pierre Boulez. What could be better than that? It's absolutely fantastic. It's also, of course, in the Boulez Conducts Bartok box, but it's a first-rate performance of that work. Then we come up with Brahms, the violin concerto, and the double concerto with, with Jin Wang and with Abado and Berlin. And this is one of the great Brahms concerto discs ever. It really is fantastic. It's a great Brahms violin concerto, a fabulous Brahms double concerto. They are the most beautiful modern performances of those works, arguably. Abado was always at his best in Brahms. His Berlin Brahms cycle is as great as anything he ever did. I mean, it's such a fantastic pairing. It really is. Then we get the Brook and Mendelssohn violin concertos with Sinopoli and the Philharmonia, also extremely well done. I have to say, you know, Sinopoli as a concerto accompanist doesn't get doesn't get much press. This was in his Philharmonia days, and you know, I, I have to talk a bit about Sinopoli because you know he made some beautiful recordings. Remember his first ones, Mendelssohn symphonies, Schubert symphonies, with the Philharmonia, and I remember I remember his notes for the Schubert. You know, where he, all he talked about was like Schubert's personal hygiene and him hanging out with hookers and catching syphilis. And I knew, I knew that there was going to be a problem later on. So then he started doing the Mahler symphonies with the Philharmonia and all hell broke loose. Basically, they were highly variable, shall we say. And then, of course, Sinopoli sort of decamped to Warner, which Teldeck at the time when he was in Dresden. And so, you know, his his career on recordings after that was kind of spotty, but he really was a marvelous conductor in so many ways. And, you know, he was just into that sort of fin de siècle decadence and, you know, hookers and lack of personal hygiene, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to go into it any more than that. He did a very nice job accompanying Gil Shaham in the famous Brook Concerto, number one, and the Mendelssohn concerto. It's terrific. Then there's a wonderful, wonderful Dvorak disc with Gil and Orly Shaham. You get the F major violin sonata, the romantic pieces, and the sonatina in G major. These are such lovely works. They really are. They still don't get the, the, the credit they deserve for being as beautiful as they really are, even though they get recorded a lot. I don't see them in concert all that often. Um, and that's a beautiful, beautiful Dvorak disc. It's as good as anything out there. Oh, and this one was really fun. This is the, the uh, let's see, oh yeah, the, the Glazunov Concerto, another terribly underrated work. It's really beautiful. I think the problem with the Glazunov is that it's too short. You know, it's only like, like how long is it here, this performance? It's, yeah, 20 minutes. It's a bit, it's a bit under, under timing for a normal concerto, but boy, is it a beautiful work. And the tune of the finale, you know, you know, it's, it's so catchy. It's really great. And then the Kabalevsky concerto. That's cool. I mean, how many times have you heard that? That's even shorter than the Glazunov. That's like, it's like a 13, 14 minute concerto. No wonder nobody ever plays it. It's typical Kabalevsky. It's sort of, you know, tuneful, tuneful socialist realist, you know, poster music. I mean, I don't know what else to call it, but it's fun to listen to. And you get the, the Tchaikovsky Souvenir d'un lieu cher, the three morceaux for violin and piano, um, orchestrated in this case by Glazunov. That's a lovely work. You know, it's as long as the Glazunov Violin Concerto. So it really deserves to get more attention than it does. And then you get the Vol Scherzo for Violin and Orchestra. Um, and this is with Gil Shaham and Pletnev and the Russian National Orchestra. I mean, you know, these are classy productions with top-notch people. Smart of DG to let him go, wasn't it? I just, I just can't quite let that one go either. Oh, then we get the Messiaen, the Quator pour la fin de temps in a perfectly smashing performance. With, again, with Jen Wang on the cello and Paul Meyer clarinet and Pyongwon Chung piano. Beautiful. This was part of DG's. Remember, they did like all those Messian recordings with Chung and uh, threw him in a box at one point. And, and this is the quartet for the end of time that was in there. And it's terrific. And it reveals 
once again, Shaham's versatility as a chamber musician, a superb chamber music player, an excellent partner um, in all of these pieces. And, you know, as some violinists are not so like chambery, but he's very, very good at that stuff. Then we get the Paganini first violin concerto with the Sassol third. Oh, yes. Shaham with Sinopoli of the New York Philharmonic, the Sassol third. Oh, it's such a great concerto. Why doesn't it get more play? I've never figured it out. It never. It didn't even make my list of the essential romantic violin concertos. Not because I don't love it, but because it just doesn't get taken out and played enough. I mean, I just don't get it. It's a great. It's as great as any nineteenth-century violin concerto. And the Paganini first is is a panic. I I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, I first saw it with Eugene Fodor in the New Haven Symphony back back in the days when I was when I was in high school, and I, I, it's so much fun. Paganini's violin concertos are terribly underrated. They really are. He was a much better composer um, than people give him credit for. And and of all the the virtuoso violin composers, you know the Viotons and you know the ones in, the other ones from that period, you know there was Rode and Kreutzer and, you know, just billions of Viotti. And, you know, he was he was really one of the best. I mean, his music is still worth listening to. Yes, it's very Italian. It's very operatic. It's very vocal. It's full of ferociously crazy violin pyrotechnics. And what could be bad about that? Seriously. I mean, it's it's good stuff. Good stuff. And then there's this wonderful disc of Paganini works for guitar and violin where you get like his sonatas. And these are, again, Paganini was a wonderful music for the guitar. And I mean, he played the guitar and, and, you know, most people don't realize that the guitar and the violin are very closely related from a technical point of view, because they're both, they're both, um, you know, string instruments. And of course the guitar has frets, you know, which help you play it. The violin doesn't, but the technique and the, and the concept behind them is quite similar. And so Paganini was quite interested in the guitar and wrote beautiful music for violin and guitar, especially this Sonata a Preghiera in F minor, which is for violin, fourth string and guitar, originally for violin and orchestra. Well, whatever. It's really kind of fun. This is with Gil Shaham and Goran Silscher. And, you know, again, beautifully executed disc. There is, if you like the repertoire, there is nothing Nothing that you can complain about with respect to the performances. Then we have this other disc that has, uh, let's see, Arvo Pert. This was an Arvo Pert disc, actually not a violin disc. And it's also a, a credit to Shaham that he participated in these performances where he was not always going to be the star turn because this has the, the Arvo Pert Third Symphony, um, which was dedicated to Nimi Yarvi, who's the conductor the conductor on that. And then you get his Tabula Rasa, Concerto for Two Violin String Orchestra and Prepared Piano, which I really like. I think it's really cool. And Fratris, one of its 475 versions for, you know, every possible, you know, combination for violin, string, orchestra, and percussion. Now, in addition to Shaham, the violin one part in Tabula Rasa is played by Adele Anthony, which shows that, you know, Shaham was not always the egomaniac who had to be first, you know, and in front on stage. He lets Miss Anthony take the first position for violin in that particular work. And so he's in there in this disc, but it's not a violin disc. And that's great. <laughs> Frankly, I think that's wonderful that we get to hear him participating without having to necessarily being, be, you know, be the first on the marquee. You know, that's, that's, that's also a good sign, I think, in an artist. Then you get the two Prokofiev violin concertos. Absolutely first class, again, with the London Symphony and Andre Previn, along with Prokofiev's Sonata for Solo Violin, which makes a fantastic encore. These are, are brilliant performances of the two Prokofiev concertos. It's another disc that I've, it's sort of my go-to disc for the two Prokofiev concertos because they're conveniently coupled and the performances are just first class from, from first note to last. Then there's a wonderful disc of French violin sonatas. You get the, the Sasson first violin sonata, and of course the Franck sonata, which is just so lovable. You just want to smooth, schmooze all over it. It's so for the finale. Oh God, what a beautiful tune. It's incredible. I'm not going to ruin it by trying to sing it, and I'm sure you'll all be thrilled. And then, oh look, 
Ravel's Tzigan. Oh, the most horrible piece Ravel ever wrote. But Shaham plays it as well as anybody ever has, or maybe as well as anybody can. It's a piece of crap. There's nothing we can do about it. But it's with Gil Shaham and Gerhard Oppitz, and a wonderful accompanist, also a terrific chamber player. So then there's a Schubert disc. Oh my gosh, you get all kinds of Schubert stuff. You get his Sonata in D major, um, and then a Moment Musical, which is arranged by Chrysler, and a whole bunch of arrangements of things, of, of waltzes and dances and German dances, and, and then the Arpeggioni Sonata arranged for violin, because, you know, we don't have Arpeggionis running around anymore. And uh, let's see, this is with Goran Solskjaer on the, on the guitar. Oh, it's arranged as a guitar thing. All righty. That's interesting. In fact, are all of these arranged by, yes, they are all arranged for violin and guitar. And let's see, and 13 original dances. Yes, good Lord. It's Schubert for violin and guitar. Okay, that's right, it was. I didn't listen to this one again. <laughs> I probably should have. Okay, well, that one's, this one's a little unusual. If you wanna hear your Schubert for violin and guitar, knock yourself out. Frankly, that's not my cup of tea. I kind of like Schubert with a piano in it, but uh, it's, 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 you know, it is what it is. I can't complain on that basis. It's all done, I have to say, even when they do these transcriptions, it's all done with so much taste and, and they, they bring it off with, with aplomb. So even though I'm never going to listen to that disc ever, as long as I live, I, I know that it's been well done. I listened to it back in the day, so I, I know what's on it. And, you know, I sort of forgot what was on it. But now that I remember, there you go. It's pretty good. Ah, Sibelius Violin Concerto and the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto with Gil Shaham and Sinopoli. You know, you don't see Sibelius and Tchaikovsky coupled all that often. And actually, they work quite well. They really do. They work very, very well together because, you know, Sibelius had a lot of Tchaikovsky in him and the violin concerto was kind of the last moment in his life, compositional life, where that was true. After that, he, he started turning towards other things and became more individual. But up till that time where you have the first symphony and the second symphony and the violin concerto, um, because he was working on the third symphony at the same time, which has nothing to do with Tchaikovsky. But, you know, the, the violin concerto is, is, is Sibelius's sort of farewell to his career as a virtuoso violinist. And, and it, they work well together. They both have a certain lyricism and throbbing Slavic intensity, if you want to call it that. And those sort of dark, smoldering passion. No, I love terms like that. Yes, and Shaham has plenty of dark, smoldering passion, and it's quite lovely. The next disc is more chamber music. This time I'm making sure that it's actually for the chamber forces originally intended. Let's see here. Oh, yes. Wait, wait, wait. I'm skipping a page. Up oh, there we, yes, look, there we go. Oh, yes. First class, the Richard Strauss Violin Sonata a piece that's really a very good work. It's one of Strauss's best early works, and it was his Opus 18. It doesn't get played very often. It's a very, very good piece, though, in this his sort of anonymous early German classical, you know, Reinecke kind of style, only it's better. And then you get the Schumann Romance and Paganini's Caprice in E Major and Chrysler stuff, uh, his Tempo di Minuetto in the style of Pugnani and the Liebeslied, and Elgar's La Capricieuse, the morceau de genre. And finally, Sarasate's Carmen Fantasy in the violin and piano version with uh, Gil Shaham, violin, and Rohan de Silva, piano, first class. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, the Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. And it sounds amazingly like the Four Seasons. You really would never know. Along with Chrysler's really charming, let's see, concerto in C major for violin and string orchestra with organ in the style of Vivaldi. That's fun. That's a wonderful coupling to the Four Seasons. It really is. I, again, there's that intelligence at work here, you know, putting together really, really good repertoire. And what was this? this is Shaham with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. 
And then you get the two Vinyovsky concerti. <sighs> not Shaham's fault. It's not Shaham's fault. It's it's Vinyovsky's fault. I, I can't stand those pieces. They are so boring. Um, I mean, Shaham plays them very beautifully, very beautifully. In fact, I still have this disc too. I mean, it's a single. It's one of the ones that if, for you know, I, you need to have as a critic <laughs> a sort of go-to performance of most things for comparison purposes. And this is my go-to performance for the Vinyovsky Concerti. Fortunately, I don't have to listen to them very often for comparison purposes. You also get the Legend in G minor and Zigeunerweisen. It's with the LSO and Lawrence Foster and also the Carmen Fantasy in the orchestral version with the Berlin Phil and Claudio Abbado. I mean, classy stuff. Now, I absolutely have to tell you my Vinyovsky story because I probably will never have another chance because I will avoid the Vinyovsky concerti as much as I possibly can. It's, it's good to have them, don't get me wrong, but I was with a friend of mine who was a violinist, actually a violist, a superb violist, and we went to see Charles Dutois and the Montreal Symphony. And I think the big item on the program was Shostakovich 8, which they did extremely well. I mean, really, really well. But on the first half of the program was the Vinyovsky first violin concerto played by Midori. Oh boy. I mean, in her early days before the nervous breakdown and all that stuff. And, and now she's reinvented herself and has a career. And I'm very happy about that. But <laughs> initially, Initially, um, you know, she was quite petite and she was, uh, you know, a whiz kid and she ran around doing the Vinyovsky first violin concerto. So we're sitting up in the in the second balcony at Carnegie Hall in the front row and Midori is playing and it's me and my friend who was Japanese and every Japanese Suzuki violinist in on the continent was there in in that particular part of the second balcony at Carnegie Hall and me, me, the only Westerner. And we're sitting there and she's whizzing away at the Vinyovsky violin concerto. And I was just bored out of my mind and I fell asleep. I confess, I fell asleep. I was out. I was out like a light and snoring. Oh, the whole deal. You know, I'm just sitting there going <laughs> like this as she's whizzing away at the Vinyovsky violin concerto. I was waiting for the Shostakovich. And when it was over, I look up and I mean, Oh my goodness, the daggers that were being thrown in my direction by all of these Suzuki violinists and their parents. Oh, and I said to my friend, I said to him, why didn't you wake me up? Why didn't you wake me up? He said, well, because watching you snore and watching them want to kill you was so much more entertaining than watching the Vinyovsky first violin concerto. So I didn't want to bother. So there you go. That's me and Vinyovsky. The next disc. John Williams. Oh, look at this. Tree Song and the, his violin concerto and three pieces from Schindler's List with John Williams and the Boston Symphony, a wonderful disc of contemporary music for violin and John Williams in a more serious vein. I like that disc. I like that disc. I really do. It's just good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Now we get American Scenes, a disc with a title. We're up to disc 19. Hang in there. Only a few to go. Gershwin, Three Preludes, Copeland's Nocturne, uh, Andre Previn's Violin Sonata, The Vineyard, and Copeland's Violin Sonata, and the Barbara Canzone for Violin and Piano with Shaham and Previn. A beautifully assembled program. You may not like everything on it, but you can't deny that it's a beautifully assembled program. And the music is, the repertoire is not the most hackneyed stuff on the planet. Good move. And then the, the Fiddler of the Opera. This is, of course, opera opera thingies for uh, for violin and piano with with Akira Iguchi piano and Gelsham. You get you get all kinds of cool stuff. You get another fantasy on Carmen by Yano Hubai. That's interesting. And Rimsky Korsakov Song of India and Porgy and Best Suite and and Rossini arranged by Castelnuovo Tedesco. The Largo Al Factotum. That's a fun piece, by the way. And, and Mozart's, let's see, Fantasy on the Magic Flute by Sarasate and Gluck's Dance of the Blessed Spirits. And let's see, Rossini arranged by Paganini, I Palpiti, the theme of variation, theme and variations from Tancredi, just great stuff. The March from the Love for Three Oranges by Prokofiev and the Strauss Rosen Cavalier Waltzes. I mean, this is fun stuff. These are fine arrangements, entertaining transcriptions, wonderful. 
Then there's a little thing called Devil's Dance. This is all, all music for violin and piano on the subject of fiendishness. You know, deviltry. You know, it's got like John Williams, Devil's Dance from the Witches of Eastwick. John Morris, uh, a Transylvanian lullaby from Young Frankenstein. Oh, that's da 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 da. You know, you've seen, you saw Young Frankenstein, right? And then Grieg's Puck, Saint-Saëns' Danse Macabre. Um, these are all, uh, let's see, Caprice Fantastique by Korngold, Brahms' Walpurgisnacht, Mendelssohn's Hexenlied, Bizzini's Ronde des Lutins, Volcom's Graceful Ghost, Sarasate's Concert Fantasy on Bruno's Faust. I mean, gosh, just tons of stuff here. And of course, Tartini's Devil's Trill Sonata, What Could Be Bad? And finally, CD 22. Oh, the pianist is Jonathan Feldman. And then on CD 22, it's just like, leftovers <laughs> you know turkey the day after thanksgiving no it's 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 you know elgar's salut d'amour and svensson's romance and chrysler more chrysler liebes freud liebes lead liebes lust liebes this liebes that uh, beethoven's two romances tchaikovsky's serenade serenade melancholique Sarasate's Romanza Andalusa and the Dvorak Romance in F minor with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. Yum. So there you have it. 22 first class violin CDs. Eh, except maybe that Schubert <laughs> violin and guitar. That's me. I can't deal with that stuff. But it's, it's all superbly done. Wonderful concerti, spectacular chamber music. It's terrific stuff, really terrific stuff. I really can't think of a, a another violinist who could put together 22 CDs like this and have it remain at such a high level. I really can't. And I just think it's fascinating that Deutsche Grammophon loves him so much that they no longer make records with him. I don't know what to tell you. It's their loss. That's all I can say, because this is a first-class box, box of music for violin and other things, and I recommend it accordingly. So keep on listening, folks. Thanks so much. Go get your Gil Shaham. Take care.